Public knowledge and awareness of agriculture is not what it used to be. Agriculture groups and agribusinesses are helping them learn more about how food is grown and delivered to your table. We'll learn more next on Show Me Ag. Welcome to Show Me Ag. I'm your host, Kyle Vickers. Agriculture awareness is a concern for many involved in producing the plentiful food and fiber that we all enjoy. Urban areas are especially isolated from the means of production and may not be familiar with modern technology. A coalition of supporters have sponsored a new exhibit at the world famous St. Louis Science Center to educate the public about agriculture today. We have with us Pamela Brosh from the St. Louis Science Center. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the St. Louis Science Center is one of our favorite places to visit as a family, a, a great place. Tell us a little bit about how the Science Center uh, came to be and, and evolved. Well, um, approximately 30 years ago, we started with the planetarium and then we started building on from there. And so the Science Center was developed to be a place where people from all ages could come and feel comfortable about learning about science, because sometimes science can be really intimidating. Um, but it's a really fun, interactive, all hands-on um, you know, activities and exhibits throughout the Science Center on a variety of different topics, everything from life sciences to paleontology. We have our iconic dinosaur, which is still there. Um, um, and then learning about space science through our amazing planetarium shows. We do have an Omnimax theater. Um, and yeah, we have been evolving, you know, definitely in the last several years, particularly in the last two years. So if you haven't been in the Science Center within the last two years, a lot has changed. It, it really is in, in the middle of one of the biggest and best cities in the country. Mm -hmm. And so very much an urban audience. Right. And so it, it seems to me, I mentioned that, that uh, people are not as aware of agriculture in the old days maybe their grandparents or parents lived on a farm, knew mm -hmm. something about farming. That's really uh, not the case anymore. Most of these kids are pretty well isolated right. from learning about actual production agriculture. Right, absolutely. And that's one of the questions I get about this brand new exhibit that just debuted in June, was why would you want to do an exhibit on agriculture right in the middle of a city? And it's for that reason. We, we work with a lot of the children who are in our urban areas who have never seen a combine. They don't know where their food comes from. And so we had the opportunity to be able to tell that story. So how did this come about? I know there's a lot of ag groups and a lot of mm -hmm. the public involvement in getting this thing off the ground. All right, so about started about three years ago. And that was when we convened a group of about 40 individuals, including farmers, backyard farmers, large-scale farmers, um, and really started asking them, like, we want to we wanted tell this story, we want to tell it right, can you help us? And so through working with them, Illinois and Missouri Farm Bureau, and a bunch of other institutions and groups, we developed this exhibit. Well, I, I do want to emphasize that. It really is a bi-state project as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And, and what groups are involved? So, um, like I mentioned, Missouri and Illinois Farm Bureau, um, Monsanto is involved, Missouri Wood Products is involved, Missouri Rice Association is involved, um, a lot of the Chamber of Commerce, so uh, working with a lot of individuals from the Agribusiness Club as well. Well, before we continue this conversation, we recently visited the GROW exhibit at the Science Center where they're digging deeper into a subject we can all relate to, our food, and where does it come from, how does it grow, and what can all of us do to be good stewards of our food supply? The Science Center um, had taken down the Explorer Dome, which used to be on this site, and we're really thinking about what to do next with this and wanted to explore agriculture because it wasn't being done really in the way that we're doing it here and we're right in the middle of you know large swaths of land that are being used for agriculture and there's so much this area is known for kind of the technology advancement in agriculture so it made sense to do that so it was actually a three-year planning process to put grow together we also know in cities there's also a large movement towards urban agriculture and people in cities thinking about well food security, how could we feed ourselves if we had to, and there's all kinds of exploration happening with that. So in addition to looking at um, and introducing people to larger scale agriculture and putting them face to face with a corn and soybean crop, we're also talking about things like aquaponics and growing in your backyard and also small diversified farms, which are really important to produce production in Missouri and Illinois. 
the idea with this exhibit was kind of to look at four different things, plant biology, animal biology, agronomics, and personal connections. So really the personal connection is where do you come into this story? You know, which part are you going to resonate with you? And so with the plant biology, we are able to get into how does the plant actually grow? What does it need? Processes like photosynthesis, but also even more in depth like soil health, what's happening underground and what are farmers, large and small, doing to you know, take care of their soil because they all want to, because they need that soil to help them produce, right? Um, so with animal biology, we obviously have our chickens on site, which allows us just a really personal way of talking about things like hybridization, um, breeding, and then um, we have another section where we introduce um, our visitors to technology and the idea of like, robots and milking and how that's really done. I mean, small and large scale, most dairy farms are going to that system or have already. So a lot of people don't realize how much technology is involved in agriculture so we can really bring that to life here. The results are very favorable that people are enjoying this exhibit. It's bringing in a different population a little bit. We're getting people from the farming communities, and that's been really fun. We've had all kinds of great conversations. And what we've heard over and over from the farmers is just thank you. Thank you for telling our story and talking about what we're doing. With, you know, it being like one to two percent, that's it, of people farming to introduce people to this, you know, it's just, you're not coming into contact day to day with farmers, and so this is allowing that to happen. We have lots of people come in and they'll say things like, oh, I don't have a green thumb, or they ask a lot of very technical questions, or they're wanting to get started, and we have a plant and animal manager who has experience with both urban gardening and working on kind of, you know, a larger small farm, if you will, in Texas, and so we're able to just work with people one-on-one -on -one about how to get started and these beds which you can probably see behind me are a great example of how people can do that in a small space we also have a larger what we kind of call our community garden which is more traditional row planting that people can walk down if they have more land but it also shows what maybe happens with mounding on smaller farms everyone eats and it's become more and more of an issue. You know, people look to food not only for social, but also for health. Um, and there's, you know, no shortage of studies <laughs> around what you should be eating. And so it's all, it's really wonderful and it provides a lot of opportunity for that. It is very satisfying to work with our visitors and work with our little kids especially. Um, when you show them and we pull out an egg that's just been laid and they can feel how warm it is and we talk about where it comes from and how it just came out of that chicken, it's a pretty powerful thing. Um, we'll pull green beans off of our trellis, we open them up, we look at the seeds, we talk about kind of the life cycle of the plant and you know if they're game we'll break it, clean it, and let them take a bite of a raw green bean. And just, we like to talk about how easy it is to do. I mean, it is not hard to grow little plants at home. So we have an area where we let them plant a seed even and come in and like, hopefully come back and see that it's grown. So it's been very, I don't know, it's been really rewarding. We have definitely been booking. It's been very popular already. We're doing, we're covering things like botany basics in our field trips, uh, eco essentials, and we're also doing something that I think is really unique to the Science Center is we're doing one on farm tech. So we can introduce people here to machines like what is the combine? How how have we gotten to that point? What's the technology behind that type of equipment? And even introducing them to ideas of like driverless tractors, because that is coming. Um, we have a little grow bot on site, so the kids will be able to drive that. It takes um, soil temperature readings. We have research being conducted on site with St. Louis University, so we can introduce kids to how you can get involved in science and agriculture. And there's so many entry points that I think kids never think about. So through those field trips, we hope that we're going to ignite that enthusiasm in agriculture. The Grow Attraction is a permanent exhibit and has plans to expand as their displays grow. And if you'd like more information about Grow, you can visit the St. Louis Science Center online at slsc.org. I'd like to say that Maddie was just fantastic. She was, her enthusiasm was really uh, uh, contagious, and uh, she just did a fantastic job. But as I watched, other families that were in there, the staff is ready to visit and help at all times and people were really enjoying it. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about what we saw, uh, the different okay. exhibits that are there. 
So there's over uh, 40 exhibits, and this is an acre wide, or large, I guess I should say. Um, so there's stuff for every single age. That's one thing I just wanted to stress. We have early childhood areas where, as you saw in the film, you can dig in the dirt and you learn about what insects live on top of the soil, what insects live beneath the soil, and why are they both important to the health of the soil. You can um, go over to our water play area and learn about water conservation. As Maddie mentioned, plant biology. You can get up in the combine. People love that. You can f um, learn how to milk a cow, both with your hands and then showing the technology with the, with the robotic arms. And then for adults, you can purchase a beverage, either beer or wine at our fermentation station, which is a repurposed 40-foot uh, shipping container. The, the, uh, the artificial cow with the milk flowing was, was very very popular when we were there. It's, it's a pretty cool exhibit. So uh, this started in June. How's it been received? It's been very well received. As Maddie mentioned, we actually are seeing a different type of clientele that would normally maybe not go to the Science Center. This is a lot of our farming families. They're really um, proud of the fact that they can go into our pavilion and they can see their family talking on the video mm -hmm. because we worked with over 120 farming families to put together all of these videos from Illinois and Missouri. So they're coming in there and what I really love is they come up to me and they're like, this is really good, but if you did this, you could make it even better. So we have a future list that's probably like 100 pages long <laughs> <laughs> of things we want to do in the future. For example, um, with the Lely robot, with the milking cow, uh, we've been talking with them, maybe bringing that in to show a portion of, you know, a s section of how that works as well. I know one of the real popular things was the hens that are there laying eggs. Absolutely, um, and we do chicken chats. The kids can do uh, feed the chickens if they want. Um, and then, like Maddie had mentioned, we let the kids either you know hold an egg that has just been laid or to look inside an egg shell, and they're just fascinated. And like I mentioned before, with the kids in the city who have not had a chance to ever experience something like this, we see them standing next to a corn stalk and just like in awe and you're you know I walked up to a few kids and I said hey what do you guys see in there they're like is that a, is that a piece of corn is that where it comes from you know and to you and me we're, we're like well yeah but to them they've never seen it they had no idea that it was this tall corn stalk and they just wanted to touch it it's a very cool thing to witness you mentioned just wanting to touch it maintaining an exhibit like this is pretty difficult, but this is really hands-on, isn't it? It's very hands-on. If the kids want to touch a corn stalk, if they want to eat a bean, if yes, everything, every single aspect of this is hands-on. We have our visitors planting trees, helping us harvesting vegetables. We have a wonderful volunteer crew out there, and the reward is they get to reap the vegetables, <laughs> <laughs> to get the vegetables and take them home. So it's very interactive, mm -hmm. and we have activity carts throughout, and that will maintain itself throughout the year. Is it hard maintaining uh, this in, in the middle of a city. I mean, you, you really have got, as we were standing there, there's uh, the maiden highway is whizzing, uh, cars whizzing by. Is it difficult to maintain all this uh, healthy crops in the middle of a city? It can be. You know, we, this is our first year, so of course there's challenges and we're learning a lot of things, but so far it's been, it's been very well. One thing that really impressed me is the uh, scope from very small scale people, mm -hmm. you know, backyard garden, uh, backyard chicken operations up right. to you've got a, a big combine and you really show what modern technology is like as well. Yes, and we have um, we have this wonderful volunteer as well as a lot of our partners, which are farmers, they come out on weekends and they will talk about what this machine does, how they use it on their farm, answer questions, you know, it's kind of like meet a farmer, and kids are really enamored by that as well. Um, so yeah, we and a lot of people are interested in where their food comes from. They have no idea how it travels here. They have no idea what crops are grown in Missouri. They didn't know that Missouri is the fourth largest rice grower mm -hmm. Most in the people United don't realize States. We have rice and they cotton. don't exactly that they, they have no idea that we actually grow rice in the state. So it's been it's very eye opening for them. And you also I believe have a little aquaculture thing going as well? We do. We have an aquaponic system, a large scale aquaponic system in our greenhouse and we are holding classes on how you can make one in your classroom out of a five gallon bucket and a goldfish, um, or how you can do this in your backyard as well. So our, uh, I know you have ongoing events. I assume you probably have some school field trips coming through on a regular basis. Um, that, as Maddie mentioned, that has been 
amazingly well received. We had 260 children come out um, from a public school district just last week, and that was for our farm technology program. And that takes you from where agriculture was and how it's moving forward using technology. We have a drone on site, we have a grow bot that test the soil temperature and the air temperature. Um, and the kids got really, is very hands-on, all of our programs are hands-on. And it was really good. We're actually booked up until the end of November. So this is a year-round event, I assume. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna be doing uh, year-round? A multitude of things. So the Science Center is open 363 days of the year. This exhibit, pending weather, will be open 363 days of the year. So. <clears throat> where we have a tractor run where you can now um, go on a ride on many tractors or adults can even do pedal tractors. We've seen a lot of adults <laughs> complain that they can't ride them as well. Um, we're gonna put conifer trees out there and we're gonna talk about uh, different types of trees and the visitors will be able to use natural materials and whether it's decorating the trees. Uh, we're bringing in alpacas in January and people will be able to do weaving. Um, so it's, a, it, it's, it's always gonna change. And then in the spring we'll plant trees I know you have some special uh, celebrations or special weekends uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year. Tell us a little bit about those. Um, so it, during the month of October, every single Sunday, uh, we've had, it's basically called our Fall into Science Festivals, and based on different themes. So we had a corn fest, we had an apple fest, um, pumpkin fest, um, and then uh, we are having a farm fest where we have our local farmers come out and talk to folks and do demonstrations. Uh, we work heavily with Prairie Farms, so they will come out and do a table, you know, making corn ice cream. People love that. Um, people can decorate pumpkins, and then we also offer spirits and wine and beer based on those themes as well. Uh, so uh, uh, what, el what else will be going on, say, next spring? Will people be able to follow this growing season? Absolutely, we really want our visitors to get involved. So we want them there when we're planting, we want them there when we're harvesting, um, and throughout the year just to come back and see how things are progressing. So what, what uh, do you have planned for the future? Oh, we have a lot planned. Like you said I said, you had we have a 100-page 100 100 yeah. future list, and that includes different types of programs, um, different types of partnerships. So we're working really closely with um, Missouri Wood Products, and um, they have donated uh, a lot of wood and we our production team has actually designed a adult life-size Jenga game and a uh, Connect 4 game. So in the winter when people can't, maybe it's too cold to go outside around the exhibit, we have a wonderful pavilion. They'll be able to go inside there. <clears throat> we'll bring our our worms and our activities inside the pavilion uh, for the winter and like I mentioned with the Lily Robot and then just keep working with the partners and saying, you know, they've given us a ton of ideas and so we're just working on them. Is this gonna require continued uh, funding and support from these groups or is this something that is kind of set in place? Well, I think it would require, you know, continued support and we have had a lot of our partners wanting to provide continued support, whether it's through Prairie Farms or Monsanto or Bungie North America. And, um, mm. but yeah, it's here to stay, so. If you're getting this good, uh, good response from kids, you, you no doubt find the support. Tell us a little bit about, as you, as you watch the kids go through, and, and, and parents, uh, how, do you, how do you think they're reacting? Are they shocked, surprised, are they enthused? Tell us a little bit about how people are reacting to this exhibit as they go through. Well, I think, just as myself, even when I started developing this along with an army of people, I had all these, perceptions, what I thought agriculture was. I grew up in a farming community, um, but as I started visiting farms, whether it's a, it's a hog farm or a dairy farm, beef farm, I all those went out the window. So I learned so much, and what I'm seeing our visitors, they're doing the same thing. They come in and they're like, oh, what is, what is this about agriculture? Oh, that doesn't sound very exciting. And then they're like, wait a minute. There's a combine, there's a grow bot, there's chickens, and you can start to see that they're, they spend more time in that area, probably more than anywhere else in the Science Center. It's a, especially if the weather's beautiful, it's really nice to be out there amongst those growing crops and, mm -hmm. and see these things happen. So what, uh, are you limited to space? Is this is about all the space you're ever gonna have? This, you... is, this is, okay. this is all the space that we have. But we have been really focused on incorporating all of the other galleries in with this grow exhibit. So in the life science lab, you may be dissecting a lily 
and then we're talking about plant biology. In the maker space, you might be constructing a raised bed. So you can learn about agriculture throughout all of the exhibits in the area as Let's well. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other attractions mm -hmm. that are there at the Science Center because it is, it's something a family could spend all day at for sure. Yeah, you, um, a couple hours is not going to do it because so you have the planetarium. Um, which has planetarium shows for all ages. We're, we have a live Sky Tonight show and a Mars show, and then we have an actual Mars rover. Um, on the main building side, you can actually program the Mars rover and then head over to the planetarium side and see it moving around from your program. Um, and then we have the makerspace area, which is really just all about innovative play and project design. Um, and a lot of the teachers really like that because it focuses on our STEM principles with science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, our life science lab, you can check your DNA. You can do cheek cell DNA and do blood work on our lab benches and learn about our coral reef aquarium. Um, then you can go down into our dig site on the lower level and learn about dinosaurs, dig up fossils, and then go into our paleo lab, which has actual fossils that our staff went to Montana and dug out. You also got a great theater there. That when we were there, we saw the uh, National Parks show, which oh, was super. Oh, that was amazing! Yes, yeah, so our OmniMax Theater um, is our, one of our very most popular um, exhibits or our, our areas. And right now, we have Mysteries of China, which is really cool. Um, and then, yeah, we have a variety of different films, and a lot of our school groups use that as well. So, if people are, are wanting to plan ahead for next year, uh, tell us a little bit about what are, are there certain oh. times of the year or weekends or something that they should uh, shoot for. Well, um, once a month during, um, especially starting next year, we will have what's called our SciFest. And it's a bunch of different festivals once a month, whether it's Health Fest or Engineering Weekend or our Rock Fossil Quake, which is all about geology and uh, earthquake safety. Um, so you, there's something really there. And then every Friday, we have our first Fridays. And that's based on a different theme like Harry Potter or Doctor Who. And those are very popular. So different age groups, it's, we have a lot for, for any age group. And then in the summer for next year, we have Tut, which is our big exhibition. Just say a little bit more about that. So um, Tut is it's one of the largest exhibits we've had in a long time. Um, and it really, I'm, I'm not very well versed on it. <laughs> um, but we'll have a bunch of exhibits in there where people can learn about Egyptian culture. We can see actual mummies. Um, and so we'll have visiting scientists as well. So there's something going on all the time. And it's a, a very affordable. It is. We're free. <laughs> you are free, and even you can even park free if you're willing to walk a little ways. Right. If you're willing, you can park free at the planetarium. If you become a member, you get to park free. You get free Omnimax tickets and planetarium tickets. Um, but yeah, we're free to get in, and you are free to explore any exhibit you want. There are some paid venues, so like the Omnimax and Tut will be a paid a exhibit extra. as well. Well, coming back to the grow exhibit, uh, let's talk about the uh, the beer and wine that's available there in case parents want to partake. Uh, how does that fit into agriculture in Missouri? So we talk about the fermentation process. Um, and so that's really what it's focused on. And then in that fermentation station, we take the vegetables that we're growing and we do food demonstrations so people can really see how to use the food that's in their garden and whether, it, and then also the fermentation process, so kimchi. Um, and beer and wine. So people, there, there's a little food station where some there of the is. vegetables are prepared as well. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, often an issue. It's really easy to make a craft dinner, and make macaroni and cheese, but mm -hmm. working with some vegetables can be a little bit of a challenge. Right, and we have a chef on site that really shows easy ways that you can use. Go out in your backyard, grab a tomato, and this is what you can make. And and uh, I know you have uh, the big combine, and it actually uh, moves sometimes when they get it going. It does. So we do two to three demonstrations a day. Um, and that combine was actually leased to us by um, Case IH. So every time there's a new model, we will change it out. We've already <laughs> changed it out. Uh, we've changed out the corn head a couple of times, which is super fun. Um, but yes, we do demonstrations. So we move the auger, um, excuse me, and the kids can um, you know, just kind of see the inner workings of it. We lift up the side panels, not when it's running. It's a little dangerous. Um, but they can see how, it, how loud it is. And they think it's going to be really loud. And they're surprised that it's kind of purrs like a kitten. That, that's part of the <clears throat> charm of the exhibit, I think, is that you think it's just going to be a walk-through static exhibit, but there's something going on all the time. Excuse me, all the time. And that is really, um, so whether we have hands-on um, 
activities done on our activity cards or all my staff are roaming around ready to answer any question. Like Maddie said, we'll pick a bean off. We'll just rip it open right there. We might pick a, a corn off the stalk and talk about, um, talk about food. Well, my compliments to uh, all the folks that put this together because it's a great exhibit, a great uh, uh, on behalf of agriculture, I guess, but it's just also a great fun place for families to visit, which is uh, real important in this day and age. Absolutely. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, Pamela, for coming with us, and mm -hmm. to Maddie, for, uh, Maddie Ernest, for being with us uh, on uh, site that day, and for being with us tonight, and for hosting us at the St. Louis Science Center. That's all the time we have for tonight, but before we go, we'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Show Me Egg. Be sure to tune in next time for another look at a topic touching rural Missouri. For everyone here at KMOS and myself, good night. We're also very interested in what you have to say. So if you have feedback you'd like to share with us, you can email us at showmeag at camos.org or find us on Facebook.